How's everyone doing? It's Indiana here with Emptor Audio. Well, I finally got a chance to listen to the SMSL AO200 MK2. Now, compared to the AO200, this is kind of like a 0.5 step up. It's not really like, you know, the next model you're here or anything. Um, basically, the only real change they actually made here was they basically put a slightly more powerful amplifier in here. And we're going to see about a 35 watt difference here. The AO200 had about 50 watts at 8 ohms, with the MK2 now being bumped up to 85 watts at 8 ohms. So that's going to be your biggest difference there between these two models. It's not like, you know, full redesign or anything. No, no, no. It's just basically a simple upgrade to the amplifier. Now we do see a slight difference in size. We're going to go from the AO200 has basically going to be 210 millimeters wide, 40 millimeters high, and 170 millimeters deep. Now going to the MK2, we're going to be the exact same width. We're going to add one millimeter to the height, which is kind of odd there. Uh, but going to the depth now, we're going to be 196 versus 170 deep. So if you can see behind me here, I've actually got my DO300. The DAC is going to be up on top, and then the AO200 MK2 is right here on the bottom. And the reason for that being is the MK2 is quite a bit more deeper than the DO300. So you can't really put the DAC below it because it kind of likes the, the uh, amplifier to kind of try to fall off the back end there. So it's kind of, it's a pretty big amp there for what it is, unfortunately. Not that's a bad thing, but it's definitely got some size to it compared to a lot of other SMSL stuff that I've tested out in the past. So I will say MSRP, you know, if you're looking to upgrade from the AO200 and you're thinking, hey, is this worth the upgrade? I'll spoil it right now for you. Probably not. Um, it is only $25 more. We're talking $250 is MSRP when you can find the AO200 for like right around $223 on Amazon. So $25, you know, increase in price, not a big deal. It's very little for this amplifier. Um, but the sound... I will say is I'm pretty lukewarm, I would say, about this amplifier. And one of the biggest things out of the box that I kind of thought was interesting with it and more confusing than really anything was the EQ settings. Um, they're pretty similar, you know, naming and menus to the DO300. Um, it's kind of like the same units, but they do different stuff. It was a little strange, but I found the EQ settings a little odd because I couldn't really get it to sound just nice and neutral. Even in just the direct mode, it sounded just a little bit... I guess not very, not a lot of bass there. Other modes, I felt like there was way too much treble, and I felt like I really couldn't just get it to sound just neutral, like I can get a lot of other amps, like say the Fozzy Audio V3, to just sound totally neutral. Just give me the sound from the DAC, and that's it. Don't make it change it at all. Nothing. Um, whereas the AO200 MK2, I felt like I was really just messing with the EQ settings a ton until I really kind of was able to just dial it in. And it was definitely a little tricky to get it dialed in. Um, so that's my one kind of complaint there. But I will say, this amplifier, testing out, you know, so much, you know, chi fi that I test out, um, a lot of different amplifiers, there's nothing really about the MK2 that is really just like, wow, you know, like there's there's no wow factor to it. There's nothing really that's like, that's like wow, this menu is really cool, or that it sounds really cool, this really cool design to it. I like the look of it. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool looking. But overall, for $250, which is, that's not that expensive, it's just that there's so much competition in that $250 range where, I mean, I could pick you out five to more amps that sound just as good, if not maybe even better, for less money. And that's kind of the thing, is when you're in this, you know, chi fi class D setting here, there's a lot of competition. If you want to hit $250, you've got just, you know, probably thousands of amplifiers below that that you can easily, you know, do comparisons to. And at that price point, I'm really expecting to just be kind of just wowed by this amplifier and just be like blown away. And I will say it does have nice full range. The bass is there. The, the highs are there. Um, but it, it felt a little, I guess, a little tiring to listen to, you could say. Um, I felt like maybe something was just missing somewhere in the mids, honestly. Um, it just felt a little bit shallow at times. Um, it's just something where I can't really put my finger on it exactly. Just trying out a lot of different EQ settings, and you go to, I, I was kind of doing a lot of just hot swapping to like the Fozzy Audio V3, just to make sure there's nothing wrong with my DAC or anything. And something with these amps though, it, it's just, 
it's hard to really figure out exactly what is just just slightly off there. Um, like the V3 is kind of just right now the, the the king of you know just great budget amplifiers right now. It sounds absolutely incredible. Um, it does have about the same bass as the MK2, um, but the the V3 I just feel like it's just all there. And the MK2 it's just like it's like a nine out of ten where it's just kind of missing something there, but you can't really figure out what it is. But you can you can hear it though after a bunch after over time. Um, and I can't really put my finger on exactly what it is. Now, I think it's got plenty of power, of course. Um, and the EQ settings are there, of course. That's going to be your big difference from the V3 going into the MK2, is you're going to get you know, a bit nicer chassis, you're going to get all the EQ settings, you got that nice screen there. So, of course, you've got a lot more features and a few other little things. Of course, you got like XLR um, inputs and outputs on this amplifier. Or sorry, inputs only on the amplifier, which is nice. So there are some, you know, really cool things. I am running XLR from the DO200 down to my MK2. Of course, I didn't really notice a difference at all going from RCA to XLR, but it's there. Why not do it, of course? So that is what I did. But I guess the best kind of conclusion I would say, guys, is I'm kind of just lukewarm about it. It's not bad. It's not good. It's kind of just there. It looks cool. But I'm just not wowed by the sound of it, especially at the $200 price point. It's not expensive, yes, but in that chi fi you know, realm of $250, that can get you a lot of stuff in that price point. And I feel like I've heard better amplifiers around that price point, and it's just not anything that's like really, you know, just like wow. It, it, there's nothing that's like pulling me to that amplifier that just it's just screaming, oh, it sounds so good. It's kind of just there, honestly. So if you're considering you know, going from the AO200 to the AO200 MK2, I'd say save your money, wait for the a AO300, honestly. Um, now I have not even heard the AO200 myself, unfortunately, I've only heard the MK2. Um, so I can't really you know, say for sure, I can't really compare it myself with commentary, but I will say the MK2 is, it's definitely solid. Um, for 250 bucks, you know, it's definitely a great, you know, I, was, I guess I could say like middle, right, middle of the road, you know, chi-fi amplifier there. Um, is it the best amplifier for 250? No, definitely not. Um, but the EQ settings, honestly, if those those are a bit improved, you know, it's made a little bit simpler, you know, and they just if I could just get an easy neutral mode, you know, on the amplifier where and and I know there's you know I know there's just a direct mode and that should be the neutral mode. It doesn't feel like it, you know. I was kind of messing with settings still, and I'm like, it just sounds off compared to like the V3 I had plugged into my Geo 300. Um, a few of the uh, other amps I've also heard too. I've got a few just laying around here, especially some of the Relic stuff. Um, also, is just very neutral sounding. Uh, but the MK2, yeah, it just felt a little bit off to me. I'm not sure what it was exactly, um, but it's still a good amplifier, especially when you mess with some settings. You can definitely make it sound pretty much there. Honestly, it's it's not hard to do. And especially with the volume control, um, it, it's kind of weird because I feel like you kind of set you know like your usual like you know set it to 20 and you're good to go. Most other amps you can kind of set to 20 and you switch to maybe a video game, you switch to maybe a movie, you switch to maybe YouTube, switch to music. It's kind of it's kind of good. Whereas the MK2, it's kind of like I feel like I'm like kind of like pulling the volume a little bit for some stuff, and I'm pulling it down a little bit for some other stuff. When you get into kind of some of the vocals, um, the bass wasn't really an issue at all. It didn't really seem like the bass was you know heavily varying a bit, but the vocals I felt like like well that sounds really quiet all of a sudden and I pull it back up and I'm like well that's too loud now and I pull it back down um, well a lot of other amps that I've heard it's you don't really need to make the adjustments too much and it's it's just not, not something you need to worry about as much with this amp or with other amplifiers so that's kind of my thoughts around this amplifier guys you know I, I would say I'm pretty lukewarm about it it's not bad it's not great but it's just you know it is what it is. It's basically just, yeah, I think it's a good amplifier for what it is. Um, now, if the price tag was like 150 yeah, this thing would be actually pretty impressive. But at 250 there's a lot of other options out there, guys. So that's my thoughts on it, guys. I'd love to hear your comments, what you guys think about it so far. And thanks for watching, guys. Take care, and have a great day.